History of Malta, Wikipedia Audio Malta has a long history and has been inhabited since settlers from Sicily arrived around 5200 BC. Malta's location has historically given it great strategic importance as a naval base, and a succession of powers, including the Phoenicians, Romans, Moors, Normans, Sicilians, Spanish, Order of St. John, French and British, have ruled the islands. Malta became an independent state in 1964, and a republic in 1974. Since 2004 the country has been a member state of the European Union. Malta stands on an underwater ridge that extends from North Africa to Sicily. At some time in the distant past, Malta was submerged, as shown by marine fossils embedded in rock in the highest points of Malta. As the ridge was pushed up and the Strait of Gibraltar closed through tectonic activity, the sea level was lower, and Malta was on a bridge of dry land that extended between the two continents, surrounded by large lakes. Some caverns in Malta have revealed bones of elephants, hippopotami, and other large animals now found in Africa, while others have revealed animals native to Europe. People first arrived in Malta around 5200 BC. These first Neolithic people probably arrived from Sicily, and were mainly farming and fishing communities, with some evidence of hunting activities. They apparently lived in caves and open dwellings. During the centuries that followed there is evidence of further contacts with other cultures, which left their influence on the local communities, evidenced by their pottery designs and colors. Geology and Prehistory One of the most notable periods of Malta's history is the Temple Period, starting around 3600 BC. The Agontija Temple in Gozo is one of the oldest freestanding buildings in the world. The name of the complex stems from the Maltese word agant, which reflects the magnitude of the temple's size. Many of the temples are in the form of five semicircular rooms connected at the center. It has been suggested that these might have represented the head, arms, and legs of a deity, since one of the commonest kinds of statue found in these temples is a fat woman a euro a symbol of fertility. The temple period lasted until about 2500 BC, at which point the civilization that raised these huge monoliths seems to have disappeared. There is much speculation about what might have happened and whether they were completely wiped out or assimilated. After the temple period came the Bronze Age. From this period there are remains of a number of settlements and villages as well as dolmens a euro altar-like structures made out of very large slabs of stone. They are claimed to belong to a population certainly different from that which built the previous megalithic temples. It is presumed the population arrived from Sicily because of the similarity to the constructions found in the largest island of the Mediterranean Sea. One surviving menhir, which was used to build temples, still stands at Kirko, it is one of the few still in good condition. Among the most interesting and mysterious remnants of this era are the so-called cart ruts as they can be seen at a place on Malta called Clapham Junction. These are pairs of parallel channels cut into the surface of the rock, and extending for considerable distances, often in an exactly straight line. Their exact use is unknown. One suggestion is that beasts of burden used to pull carts along, and these channels would guide the carts and prevent the animals from straying. The society that built these structures eventually died out or at any rate disappeared. History of Europe Phoenicians possibly from Tyre began to colonize the islands in approximately the 8th century BC as an outpost from which they expanded sea explorations and trade in the Mediterranean. 
Phoenician tombs have been found in Rabat, Malta, and the town of the same name on Gozo, which suggest that the main urban centres at the time were present day Medina on Malta and the Citt Adela on Gozo. The former settlement was known as Malath meaning safe haven, and the whole island began to be referred to by that name. The Maltese islands fell under the hegemony of Carthage in around the 6th century BC, along with most other Phoenician colonies in the western Mediterranean. By the late 4th century BC, Malta had become a trading post linking southern Italy and Sicily to Tripolitania. This resulted in the introduction of Hellenistic features in architecture and pottery, although Malta was never a Greek colony. Hellenistic architectural features can be seen in the Punic Temple at Tas Sila and a tower in A. Arik. The Greek language also began to be used in Malta, as evidenced by the bilingual Phoenician and Greek inscriptions found on the Sipi of Melkart. In the 18th century, French scholar Jean-Jacques Bartha copyright Lemmy deciphered the extinct Phoenician alphabet using the inscriptions on these Sipi. In 255 BC, the Romans raided Malta during the First Punic War, devastating much of the island. According to Latin historian Livy, the Maltese islands passed into the hands of the Romans at the start of the Second Punic War in the year 218 BC. As written by Livy, the commander of the Punic garrison on the island surrendered without resistance to Tiberius Sempronius Longus, one of the two consuls for that year who was on his way to North Africa. The archipelago was part of the province of Sicily, but by the 1st century AD it had its own senate and people's assembly. By this time, both Malta and Gozo minted distinctive coins based on Roman weight measurements. In the Roman period, the Punic city of Malath became known as Melite, and it became the administrative hub of the island. Its size grew to its maximum extent, occupying the entire area of present-day Medina and large parts of Rabat, extending to what is now the Church of St. Paul. Remains show that the city was surrounded by thick defensive walls and was also protected by a protective ditch that ran along the same line of St. Rita Street, which was built directly above it. Remains hint that a religious centre with a number of temples was built on the highest part of the promontory. The remains of one impressive residence known as the Dombs Romana have been excavated, revealing well preserved Pompeian style mosaics. This domus seems to have been the residence of a rich Roman aristocrat, and it is believed to have been built in the 1st century BC and abandoned in the 2nd century AD. The islands prospered under Roman rule, and were eventually distinguished as a municipium and a federata civitas. Many Roman antiquities still exist, testifying to the close link between the Maltese inhabitants and Sicily. Throughout the period of Roman rule, Latin became Malta's official language, and Roman religion was introduced in the islands. Despite this, the local Punic Hellenistic culture and language is thought to have survived until at least the 1st century AD. In AD 60, the Acts of the Apostles records that St. Paul was shipwrecked on an island named Melite, which many Bible scholars and Maltese conflate with Malta, there is a tradition that the shipwreck took place on the shores of the aptly named St. Paul's Bay. Neolithic and Temple Period Malta remained part of the Roman Empire until the early 6th century AD. The Vandals and later the Ostrogoths might have briefly occupied the islands in the 5th century but there is no archaeological evidence to support this. Ancient Egyptians and ancient Greeks have also inhabited the Maltese islands. In 533, Byzantine general Belisarius briefly landed at Malta while on his way from Sicily to North Africa, 
and by 535, the island was integrated into the Byzantine province of Sicily. During the Byzantine period, the main settlements remained the city of Melite on mainland Malta and the citadel on Gozo, while Marsixloke, Marsiscala, Marsa, and Slendi are believed to have served as harbours. The relatively high quantity of Byzantine ceramics found in Malta suggests that the island might have had an important strategic role within the empire from the 6th to 8th centuries. From the late 7th century onwards, the Mediterranean was being threatened by Muslim expansion. At this point, the Byzantines probably improved the defences of Malta, as can be seen by defensive walls built around the monastery at Tas Sila around the 8th century. The Byzantines might have also built the retrenchment which reduced Melite to one-third of its original size. In 870 AD, Malta was occupied by Muslims from North Africa. According to al himura Aklabids led by Halif al-Hatim besieged the Byzantine city of Melite, which was ruled by Governor Amros. Al-Hatim was killed in the fighting, and Sawada ibn Muayyan Ahmad was sent from Sicily to continue the siege following his death. The duration of the siege is unknown, but it probably lasted for some weeks or months. After Melite fell to the invaders, the inhabitants were massacred, the city was destroyed and its churches were looted. Marble from Melite's churches was used to build the castle of Sus. According to al himura Malta remained almost uninhabited until it was resettled in around 1048 or 1049 by a Muslim community and their slaves, who rebuilt the city of Melite as Medina, making it a finer place than it was before. However, Archaeological evidence suggests that Melite slash Medina was already a thriving Muslim settlement by the beginning of the 11th century, so al himuras account might be unreliable. In 1053 Euro 54, the Byzantines besieged Medina but they were repelled by its defenders. Although their rule was relatively short, the Arabs left a significant impact on Malta. In addition to their language, siculo arabic cotton, oranges and lemons and many new techniques in irrigation were introduced. Some of these, like the noria, are still used, unchanged, today. Many place names in Malta date to this period. A long historiographic controversy loomed over medieval Muslim Malta. According to the Christian Continuity Thesis, spearheaded by Giovanni Francesco Abella and still most present in popular narratives, the Maltese population continuously inhabited the islands from the early Christian era up to today, and a Christian community persisted even during Muslim times. This was contested in the 1970s by the medieval historian Godfrey Weddinger, who claimed that nothing indicated the continuity of Christianity from the late 9th to the 11th century on the Maltese islands a Euro the Maltese must have integrated into the new Arab Islamic society. The Christian continuity thesis had a revival in 2010 following the publication of Tristia ex Melitagato by Stanley Fiorini, Horatio Vela, and Joseph Brinkett who challenged Weddinger's interpretation based on a line of a Byzantine poem. Weddinger subsequently reaffirmed his thesis, based on sources from the Arab historians and geographers al-Bakri, al-Himura, Ibn Haukal, Kazwini, who all seemed to be in agreement that a euro island of Malta remained after that a ruin without inhabitants a euro thus ruling out any continuity whatsoever between the Maltese prior to 870 and after. This is also consistent with Joseph Brinkett a Euro trademark's finding of no further substratas beyond Arabic in the Maltese language, a very rare occurrence which may only be explained by a drastic lapse between one period and the following. To the contrary, 
the few Byzantine words in Maltese language can be traced to the 400 Rhodians coming with the knights in 1530, as well as to the influx of Greek Rite Christians from Sicily. Malta returned to Christian rule with the Norman conquest. It was, with Noto on the southern tip of Sicily, the last Arab stronghold in the region to be retaken by the resurgent Christians. In 1091, Count Roger I of Sicily, made an initial attempt to establish Norman rule of Malta. In 1127, his son Roger II of Sicily succeeded. Bronze Age Antiquity Malta was part of the Kingdom of Sicily for nearly 440 years. During this period, Malta was sold and resold to various feudal lords and barons and was dominated successively by the rulers of Swabia, Anjou, the Crown of Aragon, the Crown of Castile and Spain. Eventually, the Crown of Aragon, which then ruled Malta, joined with Castile in 1479, and Malta became part of the Spanish Empire. Meanwhile, Malta's administration fell in the hands of local nobility who formed a governing body called the Universita. Phoenicians and Carthage Roman rule Byzantine rule Middle Ages Arab period The islands remained largely Muslim inhabited long after the end of Arab rule. The Arab administration was also kept in place and Muslims were allowed to practice their religion freely until the 13th century. The Normans allowed an emir to remain in power with the understanding that he would pay an annual tribute to them in mules, horses, and munitions. As a result of this favorable environment, Muslims continued to demographically and economically dominate Malta for at least another 150 years after the Christian conquest. In 1122, Malta experienced a Muslim uprising and in 1127 Roger II of Sicily reconquered the islands. Even in 1175, Burchard, Bishop of Strasbourg, an envoy of Frederick I, Holy Roman Emperor, had the impression, based upon his brief visit to Malta, that it was exclusively or mainly inhabited by Muslims. Norman Kingdom of Sicily Rule In 1191, Tancred of Sicily appointed Margaritus of Brindisi the first Count of Malta. Between 1194 and 1530, the Kingdom of Sicily ruled the Maltese islands and a process of full Latinization started in Malta. The conquest of the Normans would lead to the gradual Romanization and Latinization and subsequent firm establishment of Roman Catholicism in Malta, after previous respective Eastern Orthodox and Islamic domination. Until 1224, however, there remained a strong Muslim segment of society. In 1224, Frederick II, Holy Roman Emperor, sent an expedition against Malta to establish royal control and prevent its Muslim population from helping a Muslim rebellion in the Kingdom of Sicily. After the Norman conquest, the population of the Maltese islands kept growing mainly through immigration from the north, with the exile to Malta of the entire male population of the town of Selino in 1223, the stationing of a Norman and Sicilian garrison on Malta in 1240 and the settlement in Malta of noble families from Sicily between 1372 and 1450. As a consequence of this, Capelli etal found in 2005 that the contemporary males of Malta most likely originated from southern Italy, including Sicily, and up to Calabria. 
according to a report in 1240 or 1241 by Jalalbertu Abate, who was the royal governor of Frederick II of Sicily during the Genoese period of the county of Malta, in that year the islands of Malta and Gozo had 836 Muslim families, 250 Christian families and 33 Jewish families. Around 1249, some Maltese Muslims were sent to the Italian colony of Lucera, established for Sicilian Muslims. For some historians, including Godfrey Weddinger, who follow on this IBN called on, this event marked the end of Islam in Malta. According to Weddinger, there is no doubt that by the beginning of Angevin times no professed Muslim Maltese remained either as free persons or even as serfs on the island. The Maltese language nevertheless survived, an indication that either a large number of Christians already spoke Maltese, or that many Muslims converted and remained behind. In 1266, Malta was turned over in fiefdom to Charles of Anjou, brother of France a Euro trademark S. King Louis IX, who retained it in ownership until 1283. Eventually, during Charles's rule religious coexistence became precarious in Malta, since he had a genuine intolerance of religions other than Roman Catholicism. However, Malta's links with Africa would still remain strong until the beginning of Spanish rule in 1283. In September 1429, Hafsid Saracens attempted to capture Malta but were repelled by the Maltese. The invaders pillaged the countryside and took about 3,000 inhabitants as slaves. Hospitaller Rule By the end of the 15th century, all Maltese Muslims would be forced to convert to Christianity and had to find ways to disguise their previous identities by Latinaizing or adopting new surnames. Malta was ruled by the Order of St. John as a vassal state of the Kingdom of Sicily from 1530 to 1798. Early Years In the early 16th century, the Ottoman Empire started spreading over the region, reaching southeast Europe. The Spanish King Charles V feared that if Rome fell to the Turks, it would be the end of Christian Europe. In 1522, Suleiman I drove the Knights Hospitaller of St. John out of Rhodes. They dispersed to their commanderies in Europe. Wanting to protect Rome from invasion from the south, in 1530, Charles V handed over the island to these knights. For the next 275 years, these famous Knights of Malta made the island their domain and made the Italian language official. They built towns, palaces, churches, gardens, and fortifications and embellished the island with numerous works of art and enhanced cultural heritage. Great Siege After the Siege French Occupation the Order of the Knights of St. John was originally established to set up outposts along the route to the Holy Land, to assist pilgrims going in either direction. Owing to the many confrontations that took place, one of their main tasks was to provide medical assistance, and even today the Eight-Pointed Cross is still in wide use in ambulances and first aid organizations. In return for the many lives they saved, the Order received many newly conquered territories that had to be defended. Together with the need to defend the pilgrims in their care, this gave rise to the strong military wing of the Knights. Over time, the Order became strong and rich. From Hospitallers first and military second, these priorities reversed. Since much of the territory they covered was around the Mediterranean region, they became notable seamen. 
From Malta the knights resumed their seaborne attacks of Ottoman shipping, and before long the Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent ordered a final attack on the order. By this time the knights had occupied the city of Burgu, which had excellent harbours to house their fleet. Burgu was one of the two major urban places at that time, the other most urban place being Medina the old capital city of Malta. The defences around Burgu were enhanced and new fortifications built on the other point where now there is Senglia. A small fort was built at the tip of the peninsula where the city of Valletta now stands and was named Fort St. Elmo. On May 18, 1565, Suleiman the Magnificent laid siege to Malta. By the time the Ottoman fleet arrived the knights were as ready as they could be. First, the Ottomans attacked the newly built fort of St. Elmo and after a whole month of fighting the fort was in rubble and the soldiers kept fighting until the Turks ended their lives. After this they started attacking Burgu and the fortifications at Senglia but to no gain. After a protracted siege ended on September 8 of the same year, which became known in history as the Great Siege, the Ottoman Empire conceded defeat as the approaching winter storms threatened to prevent them from leaving. The Ottoman Empire had expected an easy victory within weeks. They had 40,000 men arrayed against the Knights 9,000, most of them Maltese soldiers and simple citizens bearing arms. Their loss of thousands of men was very demoralizing. The Ottomans made no further significant military advances in Europe and the Sultan died a few years later. The year after, the order started work on a new city with fortifications like no other, on the Sibiris Peninsula which the Ottomans had used as a base during the siege. It was named Valletta after Jean Parasat de Vallette the Grand Master who had seen the order through its victory. Since the Ottoman Empire never attacked again, the fortifications were never put to the test, and today remain one of the best preserved fortifications of this period. Unlike other rulers of the island, the order of St. John did not have a home country outside the island. The island became their home so they invested in it more heavily than any other power. Besides, its members came from noble families, and had amassed considerable fortune due to their services in the route to the Holy Land. The architectural and artistic remains of this period remain among the greatest of Malta's history, especially in their prize jewel a euro the city of Valletta. However, as their main raison d'etre had ceased to exist, the order's glory days were over. In the last three decades of the 17th century, the order experienced a steady decline. This was a result of a number of factors, including the bankruptcy that was a result of some lavish rule of the last grand masters, which drained the finances of the order. Due to this, the order also became unpopular with the Maltese. Indeed, in 1775, a revolt known as the Rising of the Priests occurred. Rebels managed to capture Fort St. Elmo and St. James Cavalier, but the revolt was suppressed and some of the leaders were executed while others were imprisoned or exiled. Over the years, the power of the Knights declined. Their reign ended in 1798 when Napoleon Bonaparte's expeditionary fleet stopped off there en route to his Egyptian expedition. Napoleon asked for safe harbour to resupply his ships, and when they refused to supply him with water, Napoleon Bonaparte sent a division to scale the hills of Valletta. Grand Master Hompish capitulated on June 11. The following day a treaty was signed by which the order handed over sovereignty of the island of Malta to the French Republic. In return the French Republic agreed to employ all its credit at the Congress of Rostad to procure a principality for the Grand Master, 
equivalent to the one he gives up. During his very short stay, Napoleon accomplished quite a number of reforms, notably the creation of a new administration with a government commission, the creation of twelve municipalities, the setting up of a public finance administration, the abolition of all feudal rights and privileges, the abolition of slavery and the granting of freedom to all Turkish slaves. On the judicial level, a family code was framed and twelve judges were nominated. Public education was organized along principles laid down by Bonaparte himself, providing for primary and secondary education. Fifteen primary schools were founded and the university was replaced by an A Euro trademark a call Centrali A Euro trademark in which there were eight chairs, all very scientific in outlook, notably, arithmetic and stereometry, algebra and stereotomy, geometry and astronomy, mechanics and physics, navigation, chemistry, etc. He then sailed for Egypt leaving a substantial garrison in Malta. Since the order had also been growing unpopular with the local Maltese, the latter initially viewed the French with optimism. This illusion did not last long. Within months the French were closing convents and seizing church treasures, most notably the sword of Jean de Villette which is to date still exhibited in the Louvre, in Paris. The Maltese people rebelled, and the French garrison of General Claude Henri Belgrand de Vauboy retreated into Valletta. After several failed attempts by the locals to retake Valletta, the British were asked for their assistance. Rear Admiral Lord Horatio Nelson decided on a total blockade in 1799. The French garrison surrendered in 1800. In 1800, Malta voluntarily became part of the British Empire as a protectorate. Under the terms of the 1802 Treaty of Amiens, Britain was supposed to evacuate the island, but failed to keep this obligation a Euro one of several mutual cases of non-adherence to the treaty, which eventually led to its collapse and the resumption of war between Britain and France. Although initially the island was not given much importance, its excellent harbours became a prized asset for the British, especially after the opening of the Suez Canal in 1869. The island became a military and naval fortress, the headquarters of the British Mediterranean fleet. Home rule was refused to the Maltese until 1921 although a partly elected legislative council was created as early as 1849, and the locals sometimes suffered considerable poverty. This was due to the island being overpopulated and largely dependent on British military expenditure which varied with the demands of war. Throughout the 19th century, the British administration instituted several liberal constitutional reforms which were generally resisted by the church and the Maltese elite who preferred to cling to their feudal privileges. Political organizations, like the Nationalist Party, were created or had as one of their aims, the protection of the Italian language in Malta. In 1813 Malta was granted the Bathurst Constitution, in 1814 it was declared free of the plague, while the 1815 Congress of Vienna reaffirmed the British rule under the 1814 Treaty of Paris. In 1819, the local Italian-speaking Universita was dissolved. The year 1828 saw the revocation of the right of sanctuary, following the Vatican Church State Proclamation. Three years later, the See of Malta was made independent of the See of Palermo. In 1839, press censorship was abolished, and the construction of St. Paul's Anglican Cathedral began. 
following the 1846 Carnival Riots, in 1849 a council of government with elected members under British rule was set up. In 1870 a referendum was held on ecclesiastics serving on council of government, and in 1881 an executive council under British rule was created. In 1887, the Council of Government was entrusted with dual control under British rule. A backlash came in 1903, with the return to the 1849 form of Council of Government under British rule. The last quarter of the century saw technical and financial progress in line with the Belle Epoque. The following years saw the foundation of the Anglo-Egyptian Bank and the beginning of operation of the Malta Railway. The first definitive postage stamps were issued in 1885, and in 1904 tram service began. In 1886 Surgeon Major David Bruce discovered the microbe causing the Malta fever and in 1905 Themistocles Zamet discovered the fever's sources. Finally, in 1912, Dun Carm Sela wrote his first poem in Maltese. Between 1915 and 1918, during World War I, Malta became known as the nurse of the Mediterranean due to the large number of wounded soldiers who were accommodated in Malta. In 1919, the Sutjiagno riots over the excessive price of bread led to greater autonomy for the locals during the 1920s. After Filippo Sibiris had convened a national assembly, in 1921 self-government was granted under British rule. Malta obtained a bicameral parliament with a senate and an elected legislative assembly. Joseph Howard was named Prime Minister. In 1923 the Anu Malti was played for the first time in public, and the same year Francisco Boager became Prime Minister, followed in 1924 by Sir Hugo Pascal Mifsud and in 1927 by Sir Gerald Strickland. The 1930s saw a period of instability in the relations between the Maltese political elite, the Maltese Catholic Church, and the British rulers. The 1921 constitution was suspended twice. First in 1930 a Euro 32, when British authorities assumed that a free and fair election would not be possible following a clash between the governing constitutional party and the church and the latter's subsequent imposition of mortal sin on voters of the party and its allies, thus making a free and fair election impossible. Again, in 1933 the Constitution was withdrawn over the government's budgetary vote for the teaching of Italian in elementary schools, after just 13 months of a nationalist administration. Malta thus reverted to the Crown Colony status it held in 1813. Before the arrival of the British, the official language since 1530 had been Italian but this was downgraded by the increased use of English. In 1934 Maltese was declared an official language, which brought the number up to three. Two years later, the letters patent of the 1936 constitution declared that Maltese and English were the only official languages, thereby legally settling the long-standing language question that had dominated Maltese politics for over half a century. In 1934, only about 15% of the population could speak Italian fluently. This meant that out of 58,000 males qualified by age to be jurors, only 767 could qualify by language as only Italian had until then been used in the courts. In 1936 the Constitution was revised to provide for the nomination of members to Executive Council under British rule and in 1939 to provide again for a partly elected Council of Government under British rule. Before World War II, 
Valletta was the location of the Royal Navy's Mediterranean Fleet's headquarters. However, despite Winston Churchill's objections, the command was moved to Alexandria, Egypt, in April 1937 fearing it was too susceptible to air attacks from Europe. At the time of the Italian declaration of war, Malta had a garrison of less than 4,000 soldiers and about five weeks of food supplies for the population of about 300,000. In addition, Malta's air defences consisted of about 42 anti-aircraft guns and four Gloucester gladiators, for which three pilots were available. Being a British colony, situated close to Sicily and the Axis shipping lanes, Malta was bombarded by the Italian and German air forces. Malta was used by the British to launch attacks on the Italian Navy and had a submarine base. It was also used as a listening post, reading German radio messages including Enigma traffic. The first air raids against Malta occurred on June 11, 1940, there were six attacks that day. The island's biplanes were unable to defend due to the Lucca airfield being unfinished, however, the airfield was ready by the seventh attack. Initially, the Italians would fly at about 5,500 m, then they dropped down to 3,000 meters. Mabel Strickland would state, the Italians decided they didn't like, so they dropped their bombs 20 miles off Malta and went back. However, it was later proven that in fact, Italian bombing had been quite accurate and devastating to the island as a whole, and the words attributed to Mabel Strickland are today seen in the context of an increasingly desperate British propaganda exercise in the face of relentless Italian attacks. By the end of August, the gladiators were reinforced by 12 Hawker Hurricanes which had arrived via HMS Argus. During the first five months of combat, the island's aircraft destroyed or damaged about 37 Italian aircraft, while suffering even greater losses than the Italians. Italian fighter pilot Francisco Cavallera observed, Malta was really a big problem for USA Euro very well defended. Nevertheless, the Italian bombing campaign was causing serious damage to the island's infrastructure and the ability of the British Navy to operate effectively in the Mediterranean. On Malta, 330 people had been killed and 297 were seriously wounded from the war's inception until December 1941. In January 1941, the German ex-Flieger Corps arrived in Sicily as the Africa Corps arrived in Libya. Over the next four months 820 people were killed and 915 seriously wounded. On April 15, 1942, King George VI awarded the George Cross to the island fortress of Malta a Euro its people and defenders. Franklin D. Roosevelt arrived on December 8, 1943, and presented a United States presidential citation to the people of Malta on behalf of the people of United States. He presented the scroll on December 8 but dated it December 7 for symbolic reasons. In part it read, under repeated fire from the skies, Malta stood alone and unafraid in the center of the sea one tiny bright flame in the darkness a euro a beacon of hope for the clearer days which have come. In 1942, a convoy codenamed Operation Pedestal was sent to relieve Malta. Five ships, including the tanker SS Ohio, managed to arrive in the Grand Harbor, with enough supplies for Malta to survive. In the following year Franklin D. Roosevelt and Winston Churchill visited Malta. George VI also arrived in Grand Harbour for a visit. During the Second World War, Hugo Mifsud and George Borg Olivier were the only remaining nationalist members of Parliament of Malta. 
Hugo Mifs had fainted after delivering a very passionate defense against the deportation to concentration camps in Uganda of Enrico Mizzi and 49 other Italian Maltese accused of pro-Italian political activities. He died a few days later. In 1943, the Allies launched the invasion of Sicily from Malta. The invasion was coordinated from the Lascaris war rooms in Valletta. Following the armistice of Cassie Bile later in 1943, a large part of the Italian navy surrendered to the British in Malta. The Malta Conference was held in 1945, in which Churchill and Roosevelt met prior to the Yalta Conference with Joseph Stalin. The 1946 National Assembly resulted in a new constitution in 1947. This restored Malta's self-government, with Paul Baffa as Prime Minister. On September 5, 1947, universal suffrage for women in Malta was granted. That year, Agatha Barbara was the first woman elected as a Maltese member of Parliament. After the Second World War, the islands achieved self-rule, with the Malta Labour Party of D.O.M. Mintoff seeking either full integration with the UK or else self-determination and the Pratitnaz Jonalista of George Borg Olivier favouring independence, with the same dominion status that Canada, Australia and New Zealand enjoyed. The 1953 coronation incident, temporarily united Maltese politicians. After MLP's electoral victory in 1955, in December round table talks were held in London, on the future of Malta, namely the integration proposal put forward by Mintoff. It was attended by the new Prime Minister D.O.M. Mintoff, Borg Olivier and other Maltese politicians, along with the British colonial secretary, Alan Lennox Boyd. The British government agreed to offer the islands their own representation in British Parliament, with three seats in the House of Commons, with the Home Office taking over responsibility for Maltese affairs from the colonial office. Under the proposals, the Maltese Parliament would retain authority over all affairs except defence, foreign policy and taxation. The Maltese were also to have social and economic parity with the UK, to be guaranteed by the British Ministry of Defence the island's main source of employment. A UK integration referendum was held on 11 and February 12, 1956, in which 77.02% of voters were in favour of the proposal, but owing to a boycott by the Nationalist Party and the Church, only 59.1% of the electorate voted, thereby rendering the result inconclusive. There were also concerns expressed by British MPs that the representation of Malta at Westminster would set a precedent for other colonies, and influence the outcome of general elections. Malta in the British Empire In addition, the decreasing strategic importance of Malta to the Royal Navy meant that the British government was increasingly reluctant to maintain the naval dockyards. Following a decision by the Admiralty to dismiss 40 workers at the dockyard, Mintoff declared that representatives of the Maltese people in Parliament declare that they are no longer bound by agreements and obligations toward the British government. In response, the colonial secretary sent a cable to Mintoff, stating that he had recklessly hazarded the whole integration plan. Under protest, D.O.M. Mintoff resigned as Prime Minister along with all the MLP deputies on April 21, 1958. Giorgio Borg Olivier was offered to form an alternative government by Governor Laycock but refused. This led to the Governor declaring a state of emergency thus suspending the Constitution and Malta was placed under direct colonial administration from London. 
The MLP had now fully abandoned support for integration and now advocated full independence from the British Crown. In 1959, an interim constitution provided for an executive council under British rule. While France had implemented a similar policy in its colonies, some of which became overseas departments, the status offered to Malta from Britain constituted a unique exception. Malta was the only British colony where integration with the UK was seriously considered, and subsequent British governments have ruled out integration for remaining overseas territories, such as Gibraltar. In 1961, the Blood Commission provided for a new constitution allowing for a measure of self-government and recognising the state of Malta. Giorgio Borgo Olivier became Prime Minister the following year, when the Stolper Report was delivered. Following the passage of the Malta Independence Act 1964 by the British Parliament and the approval of a new Maltese constitution by 54.5% of voters in a referendum, the state of Malta was formed on September 21, 1964 as an independent constitutional monarchy, with Elizabeth II as Queen of Malta and Head of State. This is celebrated as Independence Day or Jum El Independenza in Maltese. On December 1, 1964, Malta was admitted to the United Nations. British Malta in the 19th and early 20th centuries In the first two post-independence electoral rounds, in 1962 and 1966 the Nationalist Party emerged as the largest party, gaining a majority of the parliamentary seats. In these years, relations with Italy were of the utmost importance to secure independence and establish linkages with continental Europe. Malta signed four cooperation agreements with Italy in 1967, during a visit of Aldo Moro to the island. In 1965 Malta joined the Council of Europe, and in 1970, Malta signed an association treaty with the European Economic Community. Malta in the interwar period The elections of 1971 saw the Labour Party under D.O.M. Mintoff win by just over 4,000 votes. The Labour government immediately set out to renegotiate the post-independence military and financial agreements with the United Kingdom. The government also undertook nationalisation programmes and the expansion of the public sector and the welfare state. Employment laws were updated with gender equality being introduced in salary pay. Concerning civil law Civil marriage was introduced and homosexuality and adultery were decriminalized. Capital punishment for murder was abolished in 1971. The following year, Malta entered into a military base agreement with the United Kingdom and other NATO countries, after mediation by Italy's Aldo Moro. Through a package of constitutional reforms agreed to with the nationalist opposition, Malta became a republic on December 13, 1974, with the last Governor-General, Sir Anthony Mamo, as its first president. The AIEAIR Republica Act, promulgated the following year, abolished all titles of nobility in Malta and mandated that they cease to be recognised. British Malta during the Second World War from Home Rule to Independence The party was confirmed in office in the 1976 elections. Between 1976 and 1981 Malta went through difficult times and the Labour government demanded that the Maltese tighten their belts in order to overcome the difficulties Malta was facing. There were shortages of essential items the water and electricity supplies were systematically suspended for two or three days a week. Political tensions increased, notably on Black Monday, when following an attempted assassination of the Prime Minister, 
the premises of the Times of Malta were burned and the house of the leader of opposition was attacked. On April 1, 1979 the last British forces left the island after the end of the economic pact to stabilise the Maltese economy. This is celebrated as Freedom Day on March 31. Celebrations start with a ceremony in Floriana near the War Memorial. A popular event on this memorable day is the traditional regatta. The regatta is held at the Grand Harbour and the teams taking part in it give it their best shot to win the much-coveted aggregate regatta shield. Under Mintoff's premiership, Malta began establishing close cultural and economic ties with Muammar Gaddafi's Libya, as well as diplomatic and military ties with North Korea. History of Independent Malta Nationalist Governments Labour Governments The End of British Presence and Shaky Relations with Libya and Italy Constitutional Crisis in the 1980s The Accession Process to the European Union Malta in the European Union Bibliography During the Mintoff years, Libya had loaned several million dollars to Malta to make up for the loss of rental income which followed the closure of British military bases in Malta, these closer ties with Libya meant a dramatic new development in Maltese foreign policy, Western media reported that Malta appeared to be turning its back on NATO, the UK and Europe generally. History books were published that began to spread the idea of a disconnection between the Italian and Catholic populations, and instead tried to promote the theory of closer cultural and ethnic ties with North Africa. This new development was noted by Boisseven in 1991, the Labour government broke off relations with NATO and sought links with the Arab world. After 900 years of being linked to Europe, Malta began to look southward. Muslims, still remembered in folklore for savage pirate attacks, were redefined as blood brothers. Malta and Libya had entered into a friendship and cooperation treaty, in response to repeated overtures by Gaddafi for a closer, more formal union between the two countries, and, for a brief period, Arabic had become a compulsory subject in Maltese secondary schools. In 1984 the Mariam al-Batul Mosque was officially opened by Muammar Gaddafi in Malta, two years after its completion. In 1980 an oil rig of the Italian company Saipam commissioned by Texaco to drill on behalf of the Maltese government 68 nautical miles southeast of Malta had to stop operations after being threatened by a Libyan gunboat. Both Malta and Libya claimed economic rights to the area and this incident raised tensions. The matter was referred to the International Court of Justice in 1982 but the court's ruling in 1985 dealt only with the delineation of a small part of the contested territory. In 1980, Malta signed a neutrality agreement with Italy, under which Malta agreed not to enter into any alliance and Italy agreed to guarantee Malta's neutrality. Malta's relations with Italy have been described as generally excellent. The 1981 general elections saw the Nationalist Party gaining an absolute majority of votes, yet the Labour winning the majority of parliamentary seats under the single transferable vote and Mintoff remained Prime Minister, leading to a political crisis. The Nationalists, now led by Eddie Fenech Adami, refused to accept the electoral result and also refused to take their seats in Parliament for the first years of the legislature, mounting a campaign demanding that Parliament should reflect the democratic will of the people. Despite this, the Labour government remained in power for the full five-year term. Mintoff resigned as Prime Minister and Party Leader and appointed Carmenu Mifsud Bonisi as his successor in 1984. 
The Mifsud Bonisi years were characterized by political tensions and violence. After a five year debate, Fenik Adami, through the intervention of Dom Mintoff, reached an agreement with Karmenya Mifsud Bonisi to improve the constitution. Constitutional amendments were made voted and made effective in January 1987 which guaranteed that the party with an absolute majority of votes would be given a majority of parliamentary seats in order to govern. This paved the way for the return of the Nationalist Party to government later that year. The general elections that followed in 1987 saw the Nationalist Party achieve such a majority of votes. The new nationalist administration of Edward Fenwick Adami sought to improve Malta's ties with Western Europe and the United States. The Nationalist Party advocated Malta's membership in the European Union presenting an application on July 16, 1990. This became a divisive issue, with Labour opposing membership. A wide-ranging program of liberalisation and public investments meant the confirmation in office of the nationalists with a larger majority in the 1992 elections. In 1993, local councils were re-established in Malta. General elections were held in Malta on October 26, 1996, although Labour received the most votes the nationalists won the most seats. The 1987 constitutional amendments had to be used for the second time, and the Labour Party was awarded an additional four seats to ensure they had a majority in Parliament. Malta's EU application was subsequently frozen. A split in the Labour Party in 1998 between the PM Sant and the former PM Mintoff resulted in the government losing the majority. Notwithstanding the President of the Republic's preference for a negotiated solution, all attempts proved futile, and he had no other option but to accept Sant and his government's resignation and a call for early elections. On being returned to office in the 1998 elections with a wide 13,000 vote margin, the Nationalist Party reactivated the EU membership application. Malta was formally accepted as a candidate country at the Helsinki European Council of December 1999. In 2000, capital punishment was abolished also from the military code of Malta. EU accession negotiations were concluded late in 2002 and a referendum on membership in 2003 saw 90.86% casting a valid vote of which 53.65% were yes votes. Labour stated that it would not be bound by this result were it returned to power in the following general election that year. In the circumstances, Elections were called and the Nationalist Party won another mandate, electing as PM Lawrence Gonzi. The accession treaty was signed and ratified and Malta joined the EU on May 1, 2004. A consensus on membership was subsequently achieved with Labour saying it would respect this result. Joe Borg was appointed as first Maltese European Commissioner in the first Barroso Commission. In the context of EU membership, Malta joined the Eurozone on January 1, 2008, the 2008 election confirmed Gonzi in the Premiership, while in 2009 George Abella became President of Malta. On May 28, 2011, Maltese voted yes in the consultative divorce referendum. At that time, Malta was one of only three countries in the world, along with the Philippines and the Vatican City, in which divorce was not permitted. As a consequence of the referendum outcome, a law allowing divorce under certain conditions was enacted in the same year. Following a corruption scandal John Daly had to resign and was replaced by Tonio Borg as Maltese commissioner in 2012. 
A snap election was called for March 2013 after the Gonza government lost the parliamentary majority. Joseph Muscat became new MP. General